So friends, Elvis attended Tupelo Junior High School in the 6th, 7th, and part of the 8th grade. We're going to go. It's now called Milam. This is Milam Junior High School that Elvis went to. It's a famous photograph of him right here that I'll show you. And we're going to see if we can walk in here. I want you to see the auditorium and all that good stuff. There's a little concert going on, or really not a concert, a, they're speaking. And it's happening right inside here. In fact, there's Bill Morris just standing up here right now. You put that on this table. This is the auditorium that Elvis would have been in back in those days. See, it says M for Milo right there. There's a little orchestra pit here, which you don't see at many of these places. Uh, we good. 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 Here you go. Elvis would have attended assemblies here. Pretty, pretty cool stuff. Never knowing that years later, people would come here and stand on this stage or sit on this stage and talk about him. Pretty amazing stuff. Love that orchestra pit down there. Pretty cool. This is the spot. A lot of updates over the years, as you can imagine, but still the same building. And there's the greatest ghost of all, right there. I wish I, I hope I can get around that good one. I'm 70. <laughs> He's 90. So this is the real deal. Milam Junior High. And there's Globe trotting with Trey helping Bill Morris. Yes, he is. So, friends, I'm with Roy Turner, and he is the executive director of the Elvis Birthplace. And, Roy, you went to Milo. No, I didn't go to you Milo. You didn't? I thought you went there. No, I did 
all my first nine years at Lawhorn. Okay. Because at that time, Lawhorn went through the ninth grade. Okay. And if you lived over here, you didn't go to Milam. The only reason Elvis went to Milam is because they moved into town. Uh-huh. Uh, which was a culture shock for him. Because in this neighborhood, he had a, a very good support group. All the kids loved to hear him sing and was telling him how great he sounded. When he got to Milam, uh, the tide kind of turned. It, when the novelty wore off, the kids got to where, eh, here he comes with his guitar, and we're tired of hearing. He did three songs, Old Ship, Leaf on a Tree, and one about uh, God Bless My Daddy, about a little boy uh, praying for his daddy in the war. So uh, while he was there, he was in a little band with four others, Jimmy Galt Sr., uh, and he's still here, but he's not in good, uh, I think he's got dementia. Uh, Lando Lee, who lives out in a retirement center and has a mind sharpest attack. And then we lost uh, Billy Walsh in the last month. He became a psychiatrist and lived down in the Jackson area. And I was always gonna go interview him and he told me to come and you know, I put it off and I'm, done I, it. I missed that opportunity. Uh, of course, Elvis played guitar. I'm not sure what the other three played but it was not sixth grade, but uh, seventh grade, and those two months he did eighth grade, it was in that period that they had this little band, and they played on that beautiful Art Deco stage uh, in the auditorium. And it's not really changed. Amazing. See, that school was destroyed in the 1936 tornado, and when they rebuilt it, it they did it in that great Art Deco style, and thank God they have it modernized it. Yes, it's beautiful. Yeah. Very cool stuff. Do you know any other things about Milo? Uh, of course, you know Elvis was in a school play in sixth grade. He played uh, the judge in act one. In the second act, they had uh, different children representing different months of the year, and he was the month of October. But he was the only student in that class that had two parts. Now, I don't know if that's coincidence or he vied to get two parts or what. That's one of those things we'll never know. But I thought it was interesting that he was the only one that had two different roles. You knew uh, Osborne, James Osborne? James, yes. Okay. James Osborne was the first one of Elvis's childhood friends that I found and started interviewing. And really kind of found him by accident because I was trying to track down more information on his brother, Mississippi Slim. And I called James in an attempt to uh, get with Slim's mother, who was in a nursing home at that time. And he said, well, you know, we were his best friends, went to school together, and we did this, that, and other together. And at that time, he was a wealth of information. Toward the end of James's life, his mind got uh, demented, and his stories changed tremendously from when he was younger, which I chalk off to dementia. Right. But the early part, you were able to get them early enough that you oh, feel like they're pretty pretty viable. He was in 1981. Yeah. And then my friend Jim Palmer and I did a, uh, an interview with him inside Johnny's one Sunday afternoon. They gave us the key to just go in there and film because James and uh, Elvis would always go in there to get a hamburger and an ARA OC, as James would call it, and Elvis would call it. Uh, and his mind was still sharp. And I got all of those stories on, on good quality video. Amazing. And you have a documentary that I know is on Amazon. I've seen it on Amazon. Yes. And El uh, Elvis, what's the name of the documentary? You Elvis your, Return to Tupelo. And you and Jim Palmer. We had shot uh, Homecoming, Tupelo Welcomes Elvis. And uh, this guy out in L.A. that I had met had said, send it to me when you finish it and I'll see what you can do with it. And he shopped it around, really, for several months. And A&E's Biography Channel decided they wanted to pursue it. And we had shot it uh, just on the cusp of HD. And they wanted to reshoot it in uh, HD. And then they also said they didn't like our lighting. And I thought, well, what was wrong with our lighting? And then when I helped them setting up their shots here in Tupelo, I saw what was wrong with my lighting. <laughs> They were much more creative. Yeah, I bet. Uh, and they had money, so they were able to get Chris Christopherson to narrate it, which added tremendously. Um, several of the interviews I had in the original didn't make it 
to the television version because one of the key persons disappeared and I couldn't find her again. I'd searched for her for a year before I found her the first time. And the other said, you know, it just, I was so nervous doing it the first time, I can't do that again. But they used our original SD footage of Brother Frank Smith because he had gotten a, a bit demented and he wasn't up to a good interview. Seems to happen to a lot of folks in their old, elder years. Oh, yeah. Things change, they, it's, yeah. and it's not, it's just a natural progression of life, I, I believe. Yeah. I'm so glad that uh, I started meeting and interviewing these people in 81 and continued on into the 90s when they were still with us and they were still sharp and they still could lay their hands on photographs or other documents that added so much, uh, you know, to the research and the history. Yeah. A lot of people don't know the tie. You mentioned Chris Christopherson, mm -hmm. and you probably are not aware of this tie. Uh, Jimmy Snow, which was Hank Snow's son that traveled with Elvis in 54 and 55, actually got the call to ministry while at Graceland in January of 1958. Chris Christopherson got saved at his church. Which is, <laughs> a, it's a roundabout way to Elvis, but yeah. that's a fact. That's what happened. Yeah. And he got called to the ministry while at Graceland in, in 1958 and went on to, he's still a pastor yeah. today. He's going to be speaking uh, at our event in August at the Tiger Man Dojo, and we're excited to have him. And I thank you, Roy, uh, for all this information. You're a wealth of knowledge, my friend. Thanks. Always good to see you. Yes, sir. So friends, related to Tupelo Junior High School, or what we showed you as Milam, Trey and I were standing in this graveyard looking at Orville Bean's grave, working on a story. A guy walks up and says, what are you guys doing? We talked to him about what we're doing. And then he says, I have a book that my teacher, Miss Camp, gave me when I was in school in 1955-56 that Elvis wrote his name in. I said, well, what did you ever do with it? He said, oh, I still got it. You want to see it? So he took us to his house and showed us, and Elvis's signature is in this book right here. This is the oldest signature that is not at Graceland. What's incredible about this is Elvis wrote his name in this book while he was in Miss Camp's class, and this man got the book from Miss Camp almost 10 years later. So now we're going to listen to Miss Camp talk, but first I'm going to show you a report card actually signed by Miss Camp. Check this out. You recognize this person? That's Miss Camp. Is it? Oh, yeah. All right, right here. Yeah. Is that her? That's when she was younger. Yeah, that, she was older right there. Mm -hmm. But that is Miss Camp. That is Miss Camp. I'll never, I'll never forget her. So friends, I just wanted to verify with an eyewitness that that was indeed Miss Camp. Her first name was Opal. There was another teacher named Camp that her first name was Mary, but this was definitely Opal. Now let's hear her talk. When Elvis was in my room in sixth grade, I did not know the children very well. And after about two weeks, um, we would have a talent show on Friday afternoon in my homeroom, uh, which I considered for the uh, English class. And so I didn't know any of the children had any talent. And I asked, I said, don't any of you children have any talent in here? <laughs> and Elvis raised his little hand timidly back there. And I said, what can you do? He said, I could play the guitar and sing. And I said, well, bring that thing tomorrow and, and sing for us. So he did the next morning in our little chapel, my own little devotion in my homeroom. And it was so good. And the children, we were all just, they just all got so quiet and were so pleased with him. I was I was just so overjoyed. I carried him down to Miss Virginia F. Thomas's sixth grade class. I said, Miss Virginia, I hate to break up your arithmetic class, but this little boy is good and I want you to hear him. Her class just applauded and, and she said, take him over that other. And I said, now, you know, this was a long time ago and teachers were not allowed to go out of their rooms. Yeah, and I carried him to another sixth grade room and then we sneaked back to our room before the principal could catch us. <laughs> and after, after that, Elvis played that guitar at recess and different times and the children would swarm around him and they just loved him. I'd have him on my programs when I gave homeroom programs for the chapel programs, which at that time grade five through 12 would. Yeah. And he, the, each teacher once a year would give a homeroom program and Elvis was always one of my main characters. He would uh, talk or sing, play, anything we wanted to. So Elvis, no doubt, walked these halls right here, friends, 6th, 7th, and part of the 8th grade before he moved to Memphis, and played with his band on that stage. I bet you've never heard about that band before. 
He also did his very first acting on that stage right there, playing two parts in the same play. Friends, do not, do not, do not miss the Tupelo Elvis Festival next year in June. Just another little piece of that Elvis puzzle. If you want to support this effort, make sure that you subscribe, like, and then join. That helps us to get more videos out there. Yes, it does.